How how did um the city or did um We Love You Foundation right. reach out to you? Mm -hmm. Yes, the We Love Foundation reached out to me. They wanted to do have host this event here, and um, they came. We met. We walked around the facility, and they determined that this would be a good place to host. And um, I just worked with them, trying to make everything possible, anything that I could do to see this, because I know it's very important for our community to get information. A lot of times, our communities um, we lack certain services because we don't know they exist. And um. Just a, just a side note, just the fact that, you know, they transformed, transformed the gym into right. this. Right, I know. It almost feels like a convention center. Right. Um, so just to see to see your gym and see an organization like this choose H. Fletcher Bound as, mm -hmm. as a site, how, what does that make, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's wonderful. Um, a lot of times, like I said, our community, we, we lack certain services and opportunities. And if you'd have seen this place last night, because we hosted a fashion show here and after the fashion show they came and started to work and we see what it is today and you know to come back and have money to see a regular gym I'm glad we took pictures because most people wouldn't believe it looked like this but they did a wonderful job though they got a great team they got a resource of volunteers so everybody came in and I like their um, their concept with the we love you foundation everybody has a helping hands you know there's an African proverb that say many hands make light work and this is a true indication of that and um, as a community, community outreach, right? Yes, community engagement, Liz, I have you want to say it. Okay, community engagement. Right. Um, you know, the, the big, the key word in that is community. Right. Just to, um, to see the community come out together, um, the fellowship and to learn about um, these healthy activities or mm -hmm. these resources, these health-related resources. Um, how important is that for the community to get this information? I think it's very important because a lot of times when you look at the media, we get a, a, a negative perception of what goes on in our communities. And it's, I'm not saying some things don't happen in our communities, but the reality, we have a, a preference of things that are positive that are going on in our communities that's just not advertised. And I think this is the way to get information out there that we are doing good things. There are people out here who are willing to help. And we got our youth that really stepped up because a lot of times our youth suffer from a few people doing some things that were, you know, considered maybe not uh, great for our community. But we have a number of youth out here that are doing great things. Like I said, last night we had a fashion show. We have a young man that I met last night who's doing a play. We got people who have talk shows, and they're all youth. So we really need to focus on these people and get them the platform to speak about the things that they do. And uh, just the fact of having youth uh be able to uh, receive this information. I mean, you know, this is a very youth-friendly event. Mm -hmm. um, so, just starting them at a young, at an early age about um, making healthy choices. Right. Um, I spoke to somebody, a uh, person that we're a partnership with, and a uh, first state uh, jam session. And the young man said something that was so powerful. He said, "We have to change the dialogue. You know, so if our youth are hearing one thing consistently." that's what they're going to speak about. If they're saying one thing consistently, then that's what they're going to act on. So we can change the dialogue because, you know, I did a uh, workshop on a perception pyramid. You know, what you think is what you say, what you say is what you do, and then how people perceive us. So we can change the mindset and have them think differently, they'll start talking differently, then they'll start doing different things. And then we can get a better perception of our youth. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to add to I would like to really... Um, to honor those people that were before me. You know, the A. Fletcher Brown Boys and Girls Club. I was a member when it was the old building before this building was built. And I'll always, when I had the opportunity, I would like to thank Richard Johnson and Gil Jackson for the things that they instilled in us at the Boys and Girls Club. You know, they taught us many life lessons and now it's for me to be back. I always thought I'd be a volunteer, but never a director. Now for me to be back in that capacity shows all the things that they taught us and instilled in us so all I want to do is give back because that's what we were taught. All right. All right. Thank you so much.